Now, would you kindly find a crowbar or something? Silent protagonists do more than make voice actors cry. They become the avatar for you to interact with the game's world. Incorrect people criticize silent protagonists as an excuse to not write a main character. That they're bland, blank, and interchangeable. Because without a voiced character, how would you know that the Wait, wind is howling? My problem with silent protagonists is that I run errands while the villains have all the fun. They get to science me to death, or steal the stick of truth, or call me maidenless and expect to live. For what they lack in motor skills, silent protagonists make up for it in gameplay expression. So they're not interchangeable, because they have to make us care if the Doomslayer can take down Ornstein and Smo, or if Chrono will become the baddest gangster in Liberty City, or if Isaac Clarke can- Excuse me, I have something to say. Wait, what? <laughs> Hi, I'm Gunnar Wright, and I'm excited to announce that I'm reprising my role as Isaac Clarke for the remake of Dead Space 1. Dead Space is a game I kinda like, and after 15 years, EA Motive released a remake of that time Isaac visited Aegis 7, and all he got were these lousy night terrors. In all my hours of research, I couldn't find many prominent examples of an updated title voicing a previously silent protagonist. It's over! That's my line. Other than Cloud in the Final Fantasy VII Remake. And voice acting in the original game's days was... You were almost a Jill sandwich. A work in progress. Adding a voice for the first time to a beloved icon can give them new depth and relatability, when done right. Thanks to the Hyper Beam, which was given to me somehow by the baby. But your audience might rebel if you present a version of their favorite character out of sync with who they imagine them to be. Well, excuse me, princess. And Dead Space will be a great case study on how a game changes when the protagonist is voiced versus silent. When Zelda tells Link to free the divine beasts, she's asking you to do it. But when you ignore her and collect all the poop seeds instead, you're deciding what Link you want to play. The game can't create dissonance between the character and the narrative when there's very little character to contradict. An example of that was the main character, Isaac, was not going to talk can't imagine how many times we wanted him to talk. It changed the way that you created dialogue. You had to try and make a character that didn't talk not look like he was always just taking orders. That came from Half-Life 2. We were all huge fans of that. Myself, Brett Robbins, who's the creative director on it. Giant fans of Half-Life 2, and we just wanted to have the, sort of the Gordon Freeman feeling game. So character never talked. And when the original Dead Space launched in 2008, Isaac Clarke was our avatar, an engineer sent with a small team to repair the USG Ishimura, a mining ship with a thousand people on board that suddenly went radio silent. What we know about Isaac we learn through his two compatriots. Guess you really miss her. You fix the tram, and I'll help you find the coal. When you discover the crew of the Ishimura has come down with COVID-19,000, you embark on an epic quest to keep your organs inside your body long enough to find your girlfriend Nicole and escape the ship. You're given objectives by the other survivors, but the plot happens around you in Dead Space 1. You may be doing all the work, but as far as the story's concerned, you're along for the ride. Isaac, no! This is a really bad idea. I'll stick around. I'm full of bad ideas. One of the first changes in Dead Space 2 was to give Isaac a voice, a face we see throughout the game, and a sense of agency he'd never had before. And so much of what we know of who Isaac Clark is started here, and the acting in Dead Space 2 was generally well received. Gunnar Wright brought an earnest, good-natured relatability to a character whose mind is weak old ramen at this point, and he did a good job delivering quiet moments of grief and depth that we could only imagine in Part 1. So much so that fans still debate if Dead Space 1 or 2 is the better game. And no matter which is your favorite, we can all agree that EA made two incredible Dead Space games. And a third one. Well, I'm a lot of good ideas, so guess what's left? And EA Motive took notice, because Gunnar Wright's voice acting isn't the only feature from the sequel they ported into Dead Space 1. The remake powered up your telekinesis to match Dead Space 2's, added the sequel's much improved zero gravity controls, sprinkled in newer plot elements like convergence, and even brought back the foam finger for finishing the game in permadeath mode. And the decision to add Isaac's voice was met with mostly praise and anticipation for an all new way to play this classic game, but this choice didn't come without risks. Dead Space's narrative is a delicate balance. Isaac needs to be strong enough to take charge in a story where he used to be an errand boy, but be vulnerable enough that the big reveal is still believable. Many sci-fi and horror franchises, including Dead Space, suffer in their later entries by explaining away their mysteries. So there was a real chance this could go wrong, and Isaac's silence in the dark while the ship creaked and screamed all around you was part of what made Dead Space 1 so unforgettable. But EA Motive had a plan. 
as a player, what, do you want to have the same feeling again? You know, feel like you're playing it for the first time. It was looking at how do we tell this story for people who are newcomers to the series. But for veteran players as well, we wanted to give them a little bit of a, you know, surprise of like, oh, this is a little different. You change that direction very slightly and it can take you to a very different place. In their many pre-release live streams with their fans, EA Motive shared their plans to include a voiced Isaac Clarke in their remake of Dead Space 1, letting us know that they would add dialogue for Isaac when he's being spoken to or during events where it would be odd if he didn't respond. You might assume these would be simple rewrites where one-sided conversations become dialogues. First, there's no fuel in the engines. Second, the gravity centrifuge is offline, which means there's a couple of trillion tons of rock pulling us down. I need you to get that centrifuge operational. Refuel the main engine and fire it up so I can stabilize the ship's orbit. Seeing you in the control room. Any news on the engines? They're out of fuel. The centrifuge is offline. We're tethered to a four trillion ton payload. Without the engines, it's dragging us down to the planet. Can you handle it alone? Sure. Fix the centrifuge, get the fuel running, then do a full restart. But you'll need to stabilize our orbit from there. Standing by. Fast as you can, Isaac. In the remake, Isaac is the only engineer on the team and a subject matter expert. Good call on the stabilizer, Isaac. That I always read the manual. You're not a subordinate anymore, you're three equals now. His dialogue even changes depending on whether he's hurt. Okay, so if we return the marker to Aegis 7, it'll stop the outbreak? Exactly. Okay, so if we return the marker to Aegis 7, it'll stop the outbreak? Exactly. He'll react in moments of pressure. And he even swears if he runs out of ammo mid-fight. But these two small rules sent a ripple effect through not only every conversation Isaac has in Dead Space 1, but some of the major plot threads that drive the story. For example, now that Isaac can voice his objectives, the game has to acknowledge his intentions, independent of the job he's there to do. Nicole? It's me. Isaac admits early on that he's hoping to see Nicole during his downtime. This rumor is not a job you turn down, but six months apart with only fit calls? Sorry. It's rough. Easy to say the wrong thing. But when the assignment takes a turn for the worse, he's understandably preoccupied with locating and protecting her. Now every repair he makes not only keeps the Ishimura in orbit, but buys him a little more time to find Nicole. So the game had to be modified to acknowledge Isaac as a character with his own goals separate from his mission. This led to the writing staff making some big changes to Chapter 5, Lethal Devotion. Oxygen levels are falling. Something's poisoning hydroponics air production, and whatever it is, it's filling the deck up with that organic stuff. We're not going to have any air to breathe soon. But if I understand these lab reports correctly, I think I can make a poison to destroy it. In the original Dead Space, Isaac heads back to the medical deck to make a poison that can kill the Leviathan, a huge necromorph hiding in hydroponics. And there, he meets Dr. Mercer. But like any good Bond villain, Mercer just monologues at you and then leaves, assuming that of course his minions will finish you off. He's the game's most devout unitologist, and you need that point of view represented, but he's so content to go about his work until you showed up, as if he otherwise would have ignored you if you hadn't interrupted him. Medical is a sanctuary. All survivors, please join us. In the Dead Space remake, you receive a shipwide broadcast from Nicole urging any survivors to gather at Medical. Naturally, Isaac heads straight there to find her, but it's a trap. Dr. Brennan's nearest and dearest. We were colleagues, you know. Dr. Chalice Mercer. Using spliced together footage of Nicole, Mercer is baiting anyone left alive to volunteer for his experiments. The level hits all the same beats. You need a concoction to use against the Leviathan. You head to the chemistry lab, Mercer's office, race to the security station to fix the air, and finally end up in cryogenics. And while this Mercer is equally devout, his menacing is far more personal. If you've heard Nicole, I have never anything but courtesy to Dr. Brennan. Can you say the same thing? At every turn, he drops hints that he's well aware of why you're here, maybe even more than you are. When were you going to tell us about the artifact, Hammond? This marker. Speaking of conflict, now Isaac has to be involved in the conflict between Hammond and Kendra, one of the central drivers of suspense throughout the game. In both the original and the remake, Kendra and Hammond question each other's honesty when it's revealed this outbreak might be caused by an artifact found on the planet below that's been brought on board. What was that? Oh. 
When they're separated shortly after they depart for the bridge, they both appeal to Isaac, raising our suspicions about which one is telling the truth. But since you couldn't intervene in the original game, it was like watching your parents get divorced in the apocalypse. Hey, knock this shit off! But now you're not just an avatar in the room, so you can keep them on task. Hammond's interactions with Kendra are largely unchanged. You didn't lose power to the port booster. You lost the port booster. Unbelievable. But according to senior writer Joe Barry, a lot of work went into revising Kendra, going from being near immediately insubordinate to more subtle and clever. I got the SOS beacon. Nicole helped me out. N Nicole's there. We got separated. She'll find her way back. She's a trooper, huh? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry about everything. Sorry for what, exactly? The most compelling opportunity in the remake was to expand on the backstories of Isaac and Nicole prior to the events on the Ishimura. While we were streaming Dead Space 2 a few weeks before the remake's release, our chat posed the question, was Nicole a unitologist? That's a great question. I don't know if she was a unitologist. Supposedly, everyone on the Ishimura, or at least all the high-ranking officers, were unitologists, so theoretically she was. But yeah, I wonder if they'll touch on that in the remake. If Nicole is the senior medical officer, wouldn't she have to be one of them? The remake answers that with a resounding hell no. That marker, that's the symbol of the Church of Unitology. It didn't take you for a believer, Isaac. My mother was. If you finished the original Dead Space and read the bios that unlock in New Game Plus, you'd learn about Isaac's parents, his shipbuilder father who had long assignments away from home, and his mother who coped with her loneliness by joining Unitology, ultimately selling off most of her family's possessions to gain favor with the church. In the original game, Isaac's father was missing and his file classified by EarthGov, but his mother was alive and well. Those background checks appear again in the remake, but with one key difference. What I didn't want to do is write Dead Space where Isaac's like, hmm, what's the Church of Unitology? I'll go along with them, I'll trust them, because every veteran player is screaming not to trust the Unitologist. So then you end up with a, a situation at the beginning of like, Isaac's like, yeah, I hate the Church of Unitology. And then people who are new to the series might be like, okay, what's Unitology? That's interesting. Veterans would be like, why does he hate Unitology at this point? And then kind of unraveling that mystery of why he has that relationship to the church and what, what their kind of philosophy is and why he's so hostile to the idea. It was Isaac's desire to free his mother from the church that brought him to Nicole. She counseled doubting followers on how they could escape the church's grasp, and that's how she and Isaac met. This changes Isaac's relationship with Dr. Kine, a devout Unitologist experiencing a crisis of faith when he witnesses the carnage the Marker has wrought on Aegis Seven. Mr. Clark, come in! Fuck this ship. You're alive. Help me be. Fuck all men, too. And Isaac got the news of his parents' passing shortly before the outbreak on the Ishimura. She's dead, Nicole. They both are. You said she was herself again. I trusted you. You might as well have killed them yourself. She was better. You told me to leave for the Ishimura. You, you pushed me to... You know what? Go to hell, Isaac. Nicole. Nicole! And those would be Isaac's last words to Nicole, a mistake he'd do anything to correct. This rumor is not a job you turn down, but six months apart with only vid calls, it's rough. Easy to say the wrong thing. But Isaac speaking gave Motive the opportunity to solve one of the biggest open plot holes in the original Dead Space, and they did, once and for all settling a debate within the fan community. And I can't tell you how without a big fat spoiler warning. So if you don't know the ending of Dead Space and you want to keep it that way, skip to this timestamp. Isaac? Is that really you? In the original Dead Space, Isaac and Nicole reunite for the first time in Chapter 7. Isaac needs an SOS beacon stored behind a locked door. Nicole emerges suddenly, separated from you by an uncrossable chasm, and offers to open the door using the terminal on her side, so you protect her from the encroaching horde while she unlocks the door to the beacon. And this was my first clue that something was wrong. Nicole should be terrified, she shouldn't even know why you're on the ship, but she pops up like a quest giver and sends you on your way. I can't get over to you. But I'll find a way. I love you. Of course, if you finish the game, you know Nicole is dead. And that she sent Isaac a video of her... 
removing herself from the story. Also, why would you ever send that to someone? I get recording them a goodbye message, and I know she wasn't in her right head, but who would want to watch that? Yikes! A memory that Isaac repressed, and he convinced himself that if he came to the Ishimura, he could still save her. You can't expect someone who is so good at dismembering to remember everything. I'm sorry, I've been trying to make that joke work for months. When Isaac arrived on the Ishimura, the Marker forced him to see visions of Nicole as if she were still alive. But the Nicole you've been trying to save was already gone. So if Nicole wasn't really there, who opened that door in Chapter 7? Fan theories abounded on the internet. Some thought the attacking Necros caused one of the game's many quarantine events, where the room slams shut until you've collected all the bones of everything inside. Some thought maybe the door was always unlocked, because Isaac's already seeing his dead girlfriend. Why couldn't he imagine a locked door? But another theory was that a different survivor found Isaac, unlocked the door, and Isaac imagined it was Nicole. That would explain why, air quotes, Nicole leaves you to fend for yourself. Only problem is, there weren't that many survivors left. Hammond was off recovering from the toxic air in hydroponics in Chapter 7. Kendra was seeing her little brother, you don't meet Dr. Kine until Chapter 9. Mercer certainly wouldn't have lent you a hand. But there were two other survivors we haven't mentioned yet. Personal log. Acting Chief Engineer Jacob Temple. In the original Dead Space, you find audio logs from Acting Chief Engineer Jacob Temple and Head of Hydroponics Dr. Elizabeth Cross, two survivors searching for each other during the outbreak. And we never meet them until their final moments in Chapter 10. They've both been captured by Mercer, Cross is already dead on the floor, and Temple joins her soon after. No, no, no! Go back! There's no way into food storage. Even if there was, the Leviathan would devour you. In the remake, Cross reaches out to you directly as you arrive in hydroponics to kill the Leviathan. This would have been a one-way conversation in the first game, but now that Isaac can talk, you can help each other. You're both separated from the ones you love, and hers happens to be an engineer. So you agree to look out for Temple, while she'll do the same for Nicole. Unfortunately, just like the original game, Mercer has Temple. But now, the final confrontation between you and Kendra plays out very differently. Let her go, Daniels. Let who go? Can't you see how delusional you are? I gave you a chance to come around, Isaac. But if you still won't see it, I'll help you. One last time. Wrigley override. This time, watch to the end. She's Elizabeth Cross. That scientist from hydroponics. You both saw what the marker wanted you to see. Jacob Temple for her. And Nicole for you. Instead of imagining someone who wasn't there, you and Cross have both been hallucinating. It was Cross on the mining deck who opened the door. The marker was using both of you. In the remake, you can return to the mining hub by turning off the room's gravity and flying back. And though the game never instructs you to, you can now reach where Nicole was standing. On your first run, you'll find some items in a locked door. But return on New Game Plus and you'll find a security console recorded your conversation with Dr. Cross. And it plays out a little differently. Isaac? It's Liz Cross. I heard gunfire. It had to be you. Or Jacob. I thought I'd never see you again. I'm gonna get us home. There's an SOS beacon nearby. We can call for help. This place has really got to you. Isaac, I have Jacob's codes. I can get you into the workshop. Come on. The cracks emerge in Chapter 10 as Isaac relives that fateful conversation. Isaac, it's me. I wish I could talk to you. She wanted to talk. I'm sorry. I can make it right. I'm sorry. I can save us both. About everything. And the marker gives him the one thing he truly wants. One last time with Nicole. New Game Plus takes this a step further. After collecting the marker fragments scattered around the Ishimura, Isaac unlocks a new dialogue path in the game's It'll final chapters. Isaac? 
Kelly and T? Yeah. They think they're dead. What do you think? The marker saw who they really were. It'll remember them. This is all I got left! Show me what I have to do! You can't stop me! Eventually giving in to the marker in the secret ending. Gotta build a little something first. For me? What is it? It's a surprise, sweetie. But I think you're gonna like it. The game's lead writer described Dead Space as a hero descending into hell to save their beloved. That's one of the oldest stories there is. It might explain why, years after most survival horror franchises have been forgotten, Dead Space endures. EA Motive did a tremendous job with the Dead Space remake. While I preferred the original Dr. Kine, who was more subtle about the hallucinations of his dead wife, this will make us whole again. and I liked Mercer's death better in the first game, that pales against everything they added or improved in the new one. There's no doubt this is now the best way to experience Dead Space 1, but it's bittersweet that the original game is suddenly a relic of its time. And there are thousands of players who will try the remake as their first run of Dead Space 1 and never meet Silent Isaac. And I can't think of a compelling reason why they should. The remake improves on his portrayal in every way, but Silent Isaac was my Isaac. He was yours, too. And playing him throughout the years, guiding him through an impossible situation, and seeing him struggle but persevere even when reality crashed down on him made me feel less alone about struggling, too. But I think everyone can relate to holding on to someone for too long trying to rescue something you had no chance to save. I know I have. I know Isaac has. And sharing that journey with Silent Isaac was irreplaceable. Any last words? Yeah, I guess not. See you around, Isaac. We made a great team. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one next. Let me know in the comments, will you ever play the original Dead Space again? Or is the remake now Dead Space 1 for you? Hit the like button if you can, it really does help the channel grow. And if you hit subscribe, you'll never miss a new release. Thanks and see you next time.